I'd like to welcome everyone today to our midweek teaching at Paradise Now Church. in Brisbane and we're going to be in the New Testament today Matthew chapter 10 starting in verse 16 we'll read a few verses there Behold I send you out as sheep in the midst of wolves therefore be wise as serpents harmless as doves But beware of men, for they will deliver you up to councils and scourge you in their synagogues. You'll be brought before governors and kings for my name's sake, or better still, for my sake, as a testimony to them and to the Gentiles. But when they deliver you up, do not worry about what, do not worry about how or what you should speak. For it will be given to you in that hour what you should speak. For it is not you who speak, but the Spirit of your Father who speaks in you. Now a brother will deliver a brother to death and a father his children and children will rise up against their parents and cast them and cause them to be put to death verse 22 Matthew 10 and you will be hated by all for my name's sake but he who endures to the end will be saved when they persecute you in this city, flee to another. For assuredly, I say to you, you will not have gone through the cities of Israel before the Son of Man comes. A disciple is not above his teacher, nor a servant above his master. It is enough for a disciple that he be like his teacher and a servant like his master. If they have called the master of the house Beelzebub, how much more will they call those of his household? And our final verse today is 26. Therefore do not fear them, for there is nothing covered that will not be revealed and hidden that will not be be known. Well, there you go. Hey? The Lord Jesus briefing his disciples. I myself love Matthew chapter 10. It's one of my favourite chapters in the Bible. The disciples were instructed here what they could expect, how they would be treated, what was going to happen. And isn't that the Lord? The Lord Jesus never enlisted or, or called people to his ministry and told them contrary to what was really going to happen. Like the churches today. The churches today. All these uh, wayward churches we have on the planet today. They, they have all their own schemes to get the people into the building. Not necessarily into the kingdom of God or into the Christ ministry but into their business, into their religious business. They have all kinds of plans, courses, schemes. 
And then what they say is, and, and ministers have said this to me, well, you shouldn't go getting too uh, serious up front because you won't get them in. You just got to, there's certain ways of getting them in. So they're basically lying to the people. If that is the case, and they're just softening them up, buttering them up to get them in. Jesus never buttered people up to get them in or to follow him. Jesus told it the way it was. This is one of the main reasons why I'm so in love with Jesus. Because he never pulled any punches. You know where you stand with Jesus. You only got to read his word and the red writing, the letters of his apostolic man. You only got to read these words and see he never pulled no punches. He, Jesus was no desperado trying to find followers. Jesus was no egotistical clown clone trying to find people to follow him and exalt him and hand over their livelihood to him Jesus or neither Jesus or his apostles his apostolic men were like that so this is where I differ with most churches today the way they operate and their concept of ministry is it's really shabby it's very uh, underhanded it's dishonest and it's not letting the people know uh, what the situation is really going to be. You really want to tell people the truth, what they're getting themselves into. See, most people don't know. They don't realise they're joining an army. They think they're joining the girl gods. Or today, we wouldn't have the girl gods or the boy gods. We'd have the gay gods. And then that covers the LGBT and ABC of who covers everything, doesn't it? All the exclusive, the, I should say the inclusive call. So today, let me say that um, we're going to major on, on verse 20. Just excuse me while... I fixed it. Yes. Sorry about that. Verse 20 is our major verse, even though we will just have a quick look at others. And uh, verse 20 says, For it is not you who speak, but the Spirit of your Father who speaks in you. So, far too often these days, uh, um, we have men and women speaking in pulpits, rather than the Holy Spirit. Highly, like highly esteemed men and women who are in the habit and the business of um, teaching and, and leading people into memorizing scripture, which is not biblical. This would not come under the heading of relationship. Teaching people how to memorize scripture. You, you, you don't have to teach people how to memorize someone they love or to think words up that are nice about someone. It's a natural thing. It's a natural thing to, to be kind and, and uh, loving and um, 
merciful. All, all these things are natural in the spirit. When we're born of the spirit, when we're born of the spirit of God, okay. When we're when we're born of the spirit of God, everything becomes uh, uh, natural in the spirit as you are in the natural. So, to all of our messages today, I'm just doing what I'm doing. I'm just doing what I'm doing. And before I go forward, I want to correct myself. Um, something I said last Sunday about um, an energy drink and uh, advertising. I thought it was Red Bull, but it wasn't. It was some energy drink, but it wasn't Red Bull, and it was an Aldi ad. It says, basically saying that they had these energy drinks so they could do a lot of work they had to do. Before I go to work. And I said, well, it sounds like something that I have been saying for years and years. And uh, it's amazing the things that we say in the pulpit at Paradise Now Church o over the last 20 years and come forward in new advertising a, a, a decade, half a decade, two decades later. So just wanted to correct that. It wasn't Red Bull. It was some other energy drink. And it was an Aldi ad, so keep your eye on the Aldi ads. <laughs> but anyway, I'm just doing what I'm doing, it, which is natural in the spirit as we are in the natural. This is the blessing. Right? This is the blessing that we have with the Christ. Uh in Matthew 10:19, I find this beautiful, very beautiful. But when they deliver you up, do not worry about how or what you should speak, for it will be given to you in that hour what you should speak. You see that? It's it's all given to us, isn't it? It's all given to us. This is what I'm saying. I'm just doing what I'm doing. It, it's this ministry, Jesus the Christ Ministries mission, Paradise Now Church. Pastor Paul Sheehan, Prophet Paul Sheehan, Evangelist Paul Sheehan, Teacher Paul Sheehan, Singer Paul Sheehan, Songwriter Paul Sheehan, Writer Paul Sheehan. Apologist Paul Sheen, hey, it's none of my doing, it's none of my studying. It's not me going to how to memorize scripture classes at the Baptist Myrie Clay Church. It's not that at all. I, I wouldn't be so insultive, so insulting to the Holy Ghost. The Lord God wants the glory. Simple. The glory belongs to Jesus. So the position I'm in today, 30 years in. 30 years in the ministry and good times, bad times, middle times. And I can ha all I can do is turn around and say, I'm just doing what I'm doing. It's not by mind. It's not by power. But by my spirit, says the Lord. It's not by the mighty dollar. It's not by Caesar's money. It's not by the power and, and the arm of flesh. 
or the mind of men and women? No. It's by my spirit, says the Lord. It's not by mind. It's not by power. But by my spirit, says the Lord. It's not by might. It's not by power, but by my Spirit, says the Lord. And it's by the Spirit, by Holy Ghost power, that we do anything of any weight. When they deliver you up, do not worry. That's nice to know. When they come for you, and, and that... They're, they're plotting against you. They're in the rears plotting. We don't have to worry or be dismayed of these cretins and these these devils. I was only talking to a, a, a brother in the Philippines last night on the phone who is up against the wall, ultimately. He, he, he's hard pressed on every side with unbelievers and compromisers, backsliders and lukewarm. And I'm sure listeners here today will know how tight it is, how tight the living standards are in the Philippines especially in the not-so-wealthy areas. And I said to this brother, I said, brother, I said, the reality is only Jesus saves, not Father, not the Holy Ghost, not Buddha, not Allah, not Muhammad. Only Jesus can save us from us. You can lead the person to the the omni oasis and, and the living waters of the Christ, but it's in their hand to drink or not. So go forward by the power of the Holy Ghost. Go forward. Go on with what the Lord's called you to do. And be not dismayed. Hey? Be not dismayed. Don't be, don't be worried about what they do or they're going to do or say. Just go forward. The Lord will keep you in every way. This is the love and wonder. That's the wonder, the wonder of Christ. When nobody else can understand me. When everything I do is right, He gives me hope and consolation. The Lord Jesus gives us strength to carry on, doesn't He? Day after day, some days are diamonds and some are stone. And sometimes the hard times just won't leave me alone. But does it, does it really matter? When they deliver you up, do not worry about how or what you should say. How am I going to say this? What shall I say? That, that sort of takes us back to the the book sitting on the shelves in the Christian bookstores. Hey? In the Koorongs and the, and the Christian bookstores of Australia and the world, how to do this and how to do that. How can I minister to a Muslim? How, <laughs> how can I minister to a J-Dub or a VW or a JW? How can I minister to a Holden? I mean, how can I minister to uh, the Mormons? A and men and women... Um, in their hunger for fame and money, Caesar's coins, they have uh, done Holy Ghost out of a job, whether it be known or unknown to them, but they're still guilty. 
of pushing Holy Ghost aside and making lots of money in the process, but preparing a pit for themselves, aren't they? Not believing the scriptures that uh, when they are delivered up, do not worry about how or what you should speak, for it will be given to you in that hour. It, it, if you have the spirit of, of God Almighty, Yahweh, and you're going down the street, you know, trucking down the street there, uh, concentrating on uh, songs and concentrating on the Lord and walking in the Spirit, the Lord will make sure he will give you every word you need for every person you meet. If you just chill, take an A Abrahamic step backward and say, right, you have your pick lot, meaning you speak first. Let the other person speak first. Then you'll get an idea where they're at, won't you? You'll see where they're coming from. And then the Holy Ghost will lead. Quick, slow, slow, quick, slow, slow, quick, slow, slow, quick, slow, slow, da, 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 Quick, slow, slow, quick, slow, slow, quick to listen, slow to speak, slow to rot. Holy Ghost won't. Eh? Quick, slow, slow, quick, slow, slow, quick, slow, slow, quick, slow, slow, da, 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 da. The paraclete, the Holy Ghost, he remembers everything. He don't forget. The paraclete does not suffer from Alzheimer's. Men and women do. Men and women do, but not not. Holy Ghost, he he don't suffer. Huh? He don't suffer from Alzheimer's. He had he don't have memory loss. Huh? He'll bring to your remembrance everything you need to remember. So. Uh, far too often we have all these these so-called ministers, which they're not. They're just Bible college ministers. They haven't been called by God or anointed or appointed because you see it clearly by their concept of ministry. They're selling their books. They're selling their this. That, that's how they run the ministry, by sales and services, which is not biblical. It's not in the New Testament. That's why I steer away from such people. I turn my back on such people. Hey. So, uh, it will be given to you, just like everything. I'm just doing what I'm doing. Natural in the spirit as you are in the natural. It will be given to you. It will be given to you in that appropriate, exact time, what you should think. So, let me say that uh, there's not a lot of effort here. When you're, when you're called to it, when you're called to it, there's, there's, there's none of this e exertion, We're exerting ourselves straining ourselves to do something. It's sort of like some people want to play drums or guitar or saxophone and they're not called to it. They're not anointed for it. You know what I mean? And they just can't do it. They strain and strain, you know, Sort of like the old orange on the tree, 
when you walk by the orange tree, you don't hear the orange going, Ugh. Ugh. Oh, what are you doing, orange? I'm trying to grow. Uh, I'm trying to be an orange. No. They're just doing what they're doing. They're just an orange. That's what they are. They won't be anything else because God made them an orange on an apple. The Lord never made me a corporate businessman. He made me a preacher, <laughs> in case you haven't noticed. He made me a preacher of the Word of God and a teacher of the Word of God. And a writer. Hey? So, there's no, no real effort. Natural in the spirit as we are in the natural. Called to it. Anointed for it. Appointed to it. Chosen for it. Hey? It's none of this free spirit stuff, free spirit. So called free thinking. It's perverted. Some people think, when they think of the word perverted, they automatically think of sex or sexual things. Not necessarily. Things can be perverted and they're distorted and, 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 and twisted. Not necessarily anything to do with sex. <laughs> but then again, that's the people's minds, isn't it, in action. So, so many people out there today and, and, and people wandering across the globe with all their success teachings and how children need to be exalted and children need to be slapped on the back all the time and, and, and told that they're this and told they're, oh, you're a success and you're wonderful and you're... I don't believe that for one minute. I don't believe that. I believe children should be treated as children, not goats. That's what they, they always call in their children kids. That's a baby goat. I believe children should be treated as children. And the, the greatest help you're ever going to give your child, if you want to be real sober about this, the greatest help you will ever give is the message of Jesus. Now, if your child accepts Jesus for who he is, I tell you what, it's going to be natural in the spirit as, as they are in the natural. They, they're just going to be doing what they're doing. Just like I'm doing what I'm doing. It was no plan of mine. It was no effort of mine. I didn't call me. <laughs> I didn't call me because if I called me, I would have run out of steam long ago because it would have been just self-esteem, not Holy Ghost assurance. See, you, you can't have a minister ministering on chimps. Hey? You, you can't have a man ministering for 30 years who receives just literally dregs, just meagre handouts for 30 years and just cops garbage for 30 years daily, attacked, attempted murder, abuse, slander, lies, hatred, Exclusion. In 30 years, I've never had one invite as a minister in this country, not one to a men's breakfast, not one invite to a minister's barbecue, not one. What does that tell you? That Surely that tells you something about the churches and ministers. 30 years ministry. Don't tell me you don't know that this man's around. 30 years. At least in the city of Brisbane or in the state of Queensland. Hey? With nearly 900 messages on YouTube. No, I didn't know he was around. Lying things. Hey? 
you got a snake's tongue. But the help of the Spirit, the Paraclete, whom Father will send in my name, he will teach you all things and bring to your remembrance all things that I said to you. John 14, 26. You see that? The helper. Most people prefer man's help and woman's help, men and women's help. Help a man is useless. Right? The help a man is useless. I know from whence my help comes from. It comes from the Lord. Right? As I was just said, 30 years, been through a living hell, which seems like heaven, but Can a, a normal man survive that kind of treatment and not have something peculiar about him? I mean, most of these, if not all, these millionaire church leaders and wealthy church leaders, you take the money away, oh, look, they'd be gone. They would have moved on. Hey? Okay? But the helper, the spirit, the paraclete, the helper, the spirit, the paraclete, whom Father will send in my name, he will teach you all things and bring to your remembrance all things. Holy Ghost, the paraclete, remembers everything. Hey? The paraclete teaches the paraclete reminds there's no need for practicing the, the ancient solic art of carnal men and women memorizing. There's no real love with memorizing, is there really? A lot of people do that in, in, in careers and uh, in their career studies, memorize. They pass the exam, you know? Bible colleges, they memorize all this stuff like robots. And they pass the examination. And then they get a certificate. And it says on their fettuccine, I mean, pasta. It says pasta. And, and it's a woman. It says pastor. <laughs> it says reverend. They're to be revered. And the most underhanded, sneaky, lying people you'd ever lay eye, laid eyes on. You ever would lay eyes on. But it says reverend. It says pastor. Because they studied for four, six long years in a theological, Dallas Theological College in Texas. In USA, gee, it must be someone come out of that college. That's the way the world operates, doesn't it? If if your children go to a certain college, there's someone to be respected, and there's someone to look up to. Another myth. I know young children that have come out of private colleges and the best, and I can tell you stories that would curl your hair if it was straight. <laughs> Hey, I myself came out of a private school, but I was the biggest terror in town. Hey, the biggest disappointment in the family was me. So I have to admit the truth, without partiality. I was a low-life dog as a child, which is basically true of every child, because Jesus said dogs are outside the house. If you're not born again and following Jesus, what are you? Can you be anything else outside the house of dogs, sorcerers, immoral people, liars and thieves, drunkards? That's what Jesus said, didn't he? We read it last Sunday in the book of Revelation, chapter 22, when we done the Omni Oasis. Right? 
Midnight at the Oasis Tell your problems to cry Revelation 22 15 Outside of dogs, sorcerers, sexually immoral, murderers, or idolaters Whoever loves and practices a lie That's the word of God that's, that's not my word. You can't put pin that on me and say, I'm saying this and I'm saying that. That's, that's the word of God. We, you, we have to revere that as the uttermost. We, we must esteem the word of God and the Holy Bible above all things and all uh, people. So, Matthew chapter 10 is rich with messianic warning okay? warning and teaching like Paul the apostle did um, yeah Matthew 10 I, I, I'm very touched by uh, verse 14 in Matthew 10 whoever will not receive you nor hear your words they will not receive you or hear your words. When you depart from that house or city, shake off the dust from your feet. Assuredly, I say to you, it will be more tolerable for the land of Sodom and Gomorrah in the day of judgment than for that city. Hey? Sodom and Gomorrah were, were homosexual cities, LGBT cities. It's going to be more tolerable for them than those who reject any man or woman that comes with the truth. Not some trumped up garbage doctrine of a demonized denomination or some clown they worship the statue of. Okay, some Waldenese statue of Mr. Waldo who thinks that poverty is going to make you holy. Hogwash. Poverty ain't going to make no one holy. Because if it did, the whole Phil Philippines is holy. <laughs> and they are. they got holes in their shirts. they got holes in their trousers. Okay. All you need to do is just be poor and, and sell rubbish on the side of the road pick up the rubbish and wash it off and resell it or sell it <laughs> no these are the words of Jesus Matthew 10 16 behold I send you out as sheep in the midst of wolves be wise as a serpent harmless as a dove okay our message today, I'm just doing what I'm doing. That's the beauty of it. That's it, It's a reflex action. True dis, the disciples and true uh, following of the Christ is a reflex action. It just, it's something that happened. It's a spontaneous thing. It's not something we plan and we pretend and it's something it's a mode we're in 25 8 you know there's nothing to be changed we're the same yesterday today and forever just like him but at the same time he's transforming us we're dying daily it means there should be less and less of the old man to be seen. But with most people I've known, they're, they're still the same. There's no less and less of them. It's more and more of them. It's all about success, free thinking, getting ahead, going ahead in the world. I mean, that's an endemic mindset. That's not the Lord. Jesus never taught 
his disciples to get ahead in the world and be someone and be influential and affluent. Jesus never taught his disciples to do that. Huh? Is that the teachings of Paul and Peter? Is that the teaching that Paul gave Timothy? A lot of hogwash. Hey? Memorizing scripture. You do the Holy Ghost out of, out of his job. There's no real contact with the teacher, is there? With this memorizing. Hey? We, we need to have that contact. We, we need to have that contact through faith. See, when you don't try to memorize scripture and you're led by the Spirit to read scripture, you're not led by the Spirit to start in Genesis and read through the whole book to Revelation three times a year. That's not the Spirit of God. The Spirit of God doesn't lead like that. It's sort of like some uh, uh, obnoxious uh, medicine it, some something I, I, I have to do because if I don't this will happen and that will happen I don't see the word of God as something I have to do I don't see the word of God as something I need to memorise so I can be a Pentecostal parrot Jesus is Lord Jesus is Lord Jesus is Lord God is love. God is love. God is love. Don't judge. Don't judge. Where's your tithe? Where's your tithe? Where's your tithe? Where's your tithe? $45 for the book. $45 for the book. There's no real contact with this. These concepts of uh, backward, endemic men and women, ungodly men, men and women, carrying on like pork chops, hey? And so, uh, so memorizing, uh, it's just a, like an installation, isn't it? It's sort of like something, <coughs> something distant, just a, re, a recording of information. Doesn't matter whether it's numbers or words or sentences, paragraphs, chapters or book. Lots of people can recite things. Don't they recite the Lord's Prayer in Parliament? Oh, Father. Roman Catholics do too. But ask them what it means. Ask them what it means. Like you can talk to a person, but unless you really know them, you really don't know what they're meaning, do you? Recital. Jesus never came for recitals, he came for disciples. <laughs> he come to discipline us what? well we don't want that that's off the list that's not very new age-ish hey people can recite mouthfuls of literature but ask them of the essence of that recital Ask them about the, what it really means. They, they would be uh, lost for words. So memorizing is not really meditation as we read in Joshua. The Lord said, meditate upon these things. You, you're not really memorizing, are you? You're in love. You're, you're longing like the deer for the water brook, panting. You're engrossed. You're, you're truly interested. Your desire is to drink of the waters of life free of charge. 
this is another thing. This is this is a walk. This is a a, a marriage and, and, and a a bride and groom thing. Okay? For it is not you who will speak, but the Spirit of Father who speaks in you. How beautiful is that? Okay? When they deliver you up, do not worry about how or what you should speak. How much more the lesser things in, in walk in our walk, in our life, in, in our daily routine. And this is talking about being delivered up to uh, governors and kings and for his name's sake. There's something's gone wrong somewhere. Don't worry. How much more in just the daily routine is the Lord going to speak as, as, as you're led by the Spirit? Are these not the sons and the children of God? who are led by the Spirit of God. Right? Oh, I've had people say to me for years, I'm a, I'm a son of God, I'm born again. I said, well, that's not really correct. Because he gives you the right, if you receive and believe what he says, he gives you the right to become sons of God. But, I mean, some time back, decades Used to be a group get around called the Manifest and Sons of God. They were off at the Pixies and uh, had all these prophets who were just P R O F I T S, lived, lived like kings and said they were prophets, lived the life of Riley. And uh, they said that, you know, they were manifested sons of God then. but you're never going to really be a manifested son of God until you, when you hit the cloud. That's when you'll be manifested that you are truly a son of God. Yeah? Until then, you know, and that's called saved to the uttermost. We are saved and then being saved and then saved to the uttermost. Up to the light we have, of course. Light being knowledge. So, I'm just doing what I'm doing. It's a natural thing for me to preach and teach. It's a, it's a natural thing. It, it's, it's a spontaneous thing. Reflex. Action. You know, it, it's something that reflects my heart condition. Re reflects my mindset. To preach, teach, write, sing. That, that, that's all a reflection of my heart. It's a reflection of the talents, talents, plural, the Lord has given me. It's nothing of me. It's nothing of me. It's, it's not an effort of mine. I don't sit down and spend two weeks trying to work out a song. I didn't go to a, a music class to learn how... To, to, to play a guitar even though I may only have the Bob Dylan four strings <laughs> four chords and old Bob Dylan made a lot of money out of four chords didn't he but that's okay it, it's not about that it's not about running up and down the neck of a guitar it, it's about what comes out of it has it touched someone can you pick up an instrument or a guitar and play it and make someone smile or cry or, make, or get them thinking? That's anointed. Huh? That's anointed. That's gifted. Like the Lord gifted Elvis Presley. He was as poor as a badger, as they say. He didn't have a dollar to scratch himself with him and his family. And uh, but God gifted him with a voice, but he used it for the wrong purpose. Ended up a whoremonger and a womanizer and a glutton who died obese. 
right? Where he will live for eternity. The scriptures will tell you that. Not me. Huh? Because they're always right. Perfect. The word of God is always right. I don't care who you're relating to, Grandma, Elvis, Michael Jackson, if you're relating to Malcolm Turnbull or Donald Trump or Paula White. Line them up with the scriptures. See what it says. Do they line up? Do they dovetail with the scriptures? Is it a tennis and Morton, uh, mortis and tenor uh, arrangement? Or is it just chalk and cheese? I'm just doing what I'm doing. That's our message today. And I'll be grieving the spirit if I didn't do what I do and say what I say. If I was to throw the towel and go and get a nine to five job, what a waste of talent. What a waste of power. What a waste of blessing. All these people, year after year after year after year after decade after decade, who I've spoken to and ministered to and gave to and helped, and the testimonies and the, and the weeping and the hatred and the violence, all that, all come out, all that poison. The tantrums and the hatred and bashing, spitting on me, and, and setting me on fire and pushing me face into tiles and shopping centres, all that poison, see, it, it, it brought it all to the surface, the hatred and the violence and, and, and made it clear who the violent one is and, and who the one is full of hatred. And it ain't me, because I ain't laid no finger on no man since I come to the Lord I can tell you but before that I'd fight anyone anytime I don't care how many tattoos you got I don't care how big your arms legs or your uh, ears I would fight anyone I, I rather than be shamed in front of other men if someone had a swing at me or, or punch me in the mouth, I'd go straight in, whack, 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 and do me best and usually get flogged. But they all knew. And strange enough, they never come back, even though they won. They knew they'd get their, they'd get a serving, see? They knew they'd get a slap around the ears too. And that's all the bully needs, isn't it? It's all you need to do with a bully. Give them a serve and back, see how they go. <laughs> Whether they're Waldensian, Wald yeah. Waldensians, Waldo Walnuts, Bile Riders, doesn't matter who they are, these religious clones. No effort, call to it anointed for it, appointed to it, chosen for it. No more free spiritism. You can't be free spirited and, and involve yourself with many spirits and be a disciple of Jesus. You just can't do it. And if you promote such stuff, well, you, you, you're showing yourself to all who, who you really are and what you really are. You're not a disciple of Jesus. Our message today, I tell you, it opens our eyes, doesn't it? The truth opens our eyes. Holy Ghost. Holy Ghost. He will teach you all things and bring to your remembrance all things that I send to you. So we have to let the Lord speak to us so that the Holy Ghost can bring it to our remembrance. We have to read the Word. Because when I read the Word, it's the Lord speaking to me. When I pray, it's me speaking to the Lord. <laughs> That's pretty simple, isn't it? 
So I stay in the Word. I don't read it religiously. I don't, oh, I didn't read the Bible today. Oh. No, I stay in the Word, natural in the Spirit, as I am in the natural. Hey? I, 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 I love it. It's like when I have a, I have a icy cold glass of Coca-Cola. I don't drink Coca-Cola day and night. When I have one, I like to have a nice icy cold Coca-Cola with a good burger or a, or a nice fresh kebab and an icy cold Coke. Wow. Smackos. Yummo. But, and that's the same with the Word of God, you know. I go by my spiritual appetite and I'm pretty hungry. I'm a bit of, bit of a deer. Come on, dear. Settle down, my wife would say. No, I'm a bit of a deer at the water brook. I go in there, right? So it's natural. And then you're reading it in love and want. and You know what I mean? It's a different story to this memorising and courses. And I'm going to college to become a pastor. What a load of hog wash that is hogwash that is not the truth that man will never ever be able to do the job as the lord has ordained it originally because it, it's the lord that gives the man the heart of the preacher the heart of the pastor the heart of the prophet you know the heart of the prophet is just so robust it's so enduring okay? patient I mean it's mind blowing I know it's not my heart okay? it's not my heart the Lord has given me a new heart when he called me with a holy calling, eh? the Lord Jesus, he is not slack to meet the call. The Lord Jesus knows what he's doing. We remember the patience of the prophets, don't we? Hey? how the prophets suffered and how the Lord brought them through that's a gift that's a gift like he took Amos from the fold and made him who he was he gifted him Yahweh called him to it, anointed him, appointed him to it, chose him. That's, I mean, that's everything. Unless, unless you're doing it natural in the spirit, as you are in the natural, you, you, you don't have it. As John said, if you haven't been given the gift from above, you just don't have it. It's simple as that. But if you've got the gift, as I was saying about instruments, there's people that go, they learn and learn and learn and learn and learn. When I was in Spain, I got to talk to different musicians. And uh, one was a, uh, he, he played flamenco music and uh, classical, oh, just so beautiful. Uh, he did know the Lord, but he was, uh, I would say, my um, the sermon of him at the end was lukewarm, Laodicean, beautiful uh, guitarist. Uh, and I met people in the subway Beautiful guitar, and the guitars were just so shabby, 
where they've been brawling and broken parts of the guitar. And not a, as many strings on the guitar as they should have, but still beautiful guitarists. And I was left with no other reason to believe that they were just gifted. But then again, in, I was in a music store in Spain, in Madrid, and I was looking at these guitars at $4,000, $5,000, beautiful. And uh, the store manager came over and he picked it up and he started playing it. But it was, wasn't a scratch on these people who were gifted. And he was telling me how long he's been doing music and reading music and playing music. Not a scratch on the gifted man. You see? The anointing is everything. The anointing is everything. <laughs> if you're not anointed, hey? If we're not anointed to do it, it'll be a struggle. It will be just so laborious. But, uh, as the scripture says, it is not you. It is not you who speak. Hallelujah. Banana boat. Dun, 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 dun. Banana boat. Dun, 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 dun. Banana boat. Dun, 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 It is not you who speak, but, but, the Spirit. There's a sweet anointing in this place. And I know it's the presence of my God. Sweet. Sweet anointing. It's everything. To have the anointing. <laughs> hey? Anoint me with fresh oil. Fill me, Spirit of God. Help me see thy purpose. Understand all thy ways. Hey? Hallelujah. Jesus. Jesus. Son of David. Have mercy, Lord, on all my listeners. Have mercy. Be merciful to them. Anoint them afresh. Use them, Lord, for your glory. Let them just be natural in the spirit as they are in the natural. Let them be jealous for you, Jesus. Jealous for themselves. Jealous for their neighbor. Jealous for their family. Let them be, let them be so hungry for righteousness and thirsty for righteousness that they will be filled full of the Holy Ghost and power and full filled with the Holy Ghost and fire and the Holy Ghost and fire Baptized afresh with the Holy Ghost and fire. That they will not rely, Lord, on their own understanding. But they will acknowledge you in all your ways. They will acknowledge you in all their ways too. And you will set their path straight. 
Hallelujah. Thou acknowledge what you have written. Thou will acknowledge there is no way without Yahweh. For it's not by might, it's not by power, but by your spirit, Jesus. For it is not you who will do the speaking. Oh, I have problems with public speaking. Oh, I have problems with this, I have problems. It is not you. It is not you. It's no longer I that liveth. It's no longer I that liveth. Christ that's living through me. No longer I that liveth. Christ that liveth in me. He lives, oh he lives. Jesus is alive in me. No longer I that live, but Christ that liveth in me. It's the beauty and the power and the love, isn't it? The kindness of Father all in one. All in one. By my spirit, says the Lord. Not by anyone or anything else, but by my spirit. <laughs> Not by anything. You don't need anything else. You don't need to go and be an, an academic, intellectual orator. You don't need that. You need the Holy Spirit. Hey? You need the Holy Spirit. We have it all in the one package, don't we? Isaiah. Can we go to Isaiah? Let's turn in our Bibles to the writing of Isaiah. Hallelujah. I'm just doing what I'm doing. If you know what I mean. Isaiah chapter 11. Verse 1. There shall come forth the rod from the stem of Jesse, and a branch shall grow out of his roots, the spirit of the Lord shall rest upon him, the spirit of wisdom, the spirit of understanding, spirit of counsel, spirit of might, knowledge, fear of the Lord. Seven spirits of the Lord. Hey? When we have the Holy Spirit, hey, we have the spirit of the Lord. We have rest. <laughs> the Spirit of the Lord rests upon us. Hey? If he don't find you're at peace with him, he won't rest. The Spirit of the Lord, the Spirit of my Lord, he is resting upon me to heal the broken heart and to set the captive free. The Spirit of my Lord He is upon me. The Spirit of my Lord is on me <laughs> the spirit of my Lord you see these spirit wisdom understanding counsel knowledge fear of the Lord hey the spirits of the Lord all in one for us culled it down to the Holy Spirit Cull it down to Holy Spirit. Which is clear in the very first words of verse 2, Isaiah. 
and the explanation of the Spirit of the Lord comes after that. The Spirit of the Lord shall rest upon me. Spirit of wisdom, Spirit of understanding, Spirit of counsel, Spirit of might, Spirit of knowledge, Spirit of fear, and the Lord respect for the Lord. The Holy Spirit, the paraclete. Hey? And you'll be just doing what you're doing. It, it, it's, a, it's just a natural thing for you to go forward and, and talk to people in the street. and It's a natural thing. You're gifted. We're gifted to do that. The church, the true church, the spirit, working with the church, the bride, they're out there saying right now, come on, come and have a drink. As my mum used to say, come on, love, come in out of the sun and have a nice cool drink. I made some nice red cordial for you and a couple of sandwiches. Come on, love. Well, that's what Jesus is saying. That's what Father is saying. That's what the Spirit is saying. Come and have a drink. I can see you're parched. I can see you're thirsty. I can see you're drying up like a prune. Hey? You're looking old in the face. <laughs> you need that youthful look of the Holy Spirit. Hey? You need the wisdom of God. For the wisdom of God takes the sternness from a man's face and gives him a young, boyish look, a youthful look, a ruddy, youthful look. Hey? When the Spirit of the Lord is in my heart, I'll dance like David danced. I will dance, I will dance, I will dance like David danced. I will dance, I will dance, dance like David danced. When the Spirit of the Lord is in my heart, I will sing like David sang. When the Spirit of the Lord is in my heart, I will sing like David sang. I will sing, I will sing, I will sing like David sang. I will sing. Singing victory all the way. We only sing victory songs at our church. Hey, we only sing victory songs. That's just the leading. We're just uh, doing what we're doing. We already have it. It's all finished at the tree. We got the victory. No devil's running the show. <laughs> no devil's running my fellowship. And no devil's running my house. And no devil's running me. He might come and give me a smack now and then. The scepter of wickedness... Uh, Although it may strike the land allotted to the righteous, it cannot remain the scepter of wickedness. The old devil can come. He can throw his tail around a bit. Hey? Like an old dinosaur. Hey? And do the maroobra stomp or something. But he can't remain. The scepter of wickedness will not remain upon the land allotted to the righteous. <laughs> oh dear, oh dear. Hey? The love of the Lord when we fall in love with Jesus. We give ourselves over to do Father's will. When I fall in love, it will be forever, or I'll never fall in love. That's what I sent to Jesus when he called me. 
I'm going to fall in love with you, Jesus, it's going to be forever. And I'll never, ever let anyone or anything stand in our way. Between you and me, no one and nothing. When I fall in love, it will be forever, or I'll never fall in love. That's the way to love the Lord. Your God with all your heart, soul, strength and mind. Love your neighbour as you love yourself. That's the second command. It always will be second. People will always be second in my life. They'll never, not one person will ever be first, only Jesus. Second person of the Godhead. <laughs> hey? The three men I admire most, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Ghost. We're about to set sail for New York. The day the preacher cried. And we'll be singing praise, praise to the Lord God. Hey. Praise to the Lord God when my wife and I set sail to New York City to proclaim the message of Messiah. Repent and be forgiven. Hallelujah. Glory to the Lamb, eh? So I'm going to leave it there today. I'm going to leave the message there. I'm just doing what I'm doing. Natural in the spirit as we are in the natural. <laughs> Go forward. Go forward, dear listener. Don't panic. Just look to the Holy Ghost. Look to the Lord and the spirit. will move. For it's not of you. It's not you. Who speak, but the Spirit of Father who's going to speak in you. I give you all the glory, Jesus, and everybody said, Amen, Amen, and Amen.